Today on the Our Ambassadors series, we're joined by Australia's Ambassador to the United States, Mr. Kim Beasley. Welcome, Kim. Very good to be with you. I wanted to open our discussion by talking about how your interest in the US first developed. Oddly enough, it came out of the Vietnam War. Uh, it was a huge debate when I was young and it involved uh, us as a generation very directly with conscription and participation in the war. And so you, you, we seem to be there as a result of our alliance with the United States and our friendship with the United States. So we began to look at uh, many of us kids at uh, what sort of country the United States was. As I got interested in that, from that angle, I went much broader and much deeper, got an appreciation of the, the immense value of the relationship with the United States to Australia through the century. In terms of the people-to-people -people links and also how the relationships evolved, how, how would you describe that? So Australia's founded because of uh, the United States War of Independence. In World War I, the first time American troops engaged in fighting, it was under command of General Monash at Hamel. And then, of course, we come to World War II. That's really what most people would identify as the point at which a, a, a very substantial relationship was developed between the two countries with something like a million American service personnel passing through Australia during the war and that led to an interest in the Australian government in moving away, at least in part, from a 100% British alignment to uh, looking at the creation of a, an alliance relationship with the US which came to fruition in 1951 with ANZUS. And on the, on the basis of ANZUS, just an awful lot of agreements, security agreements have been built. As you've just outlined, the defence relationship is very important, but could you please talk to us about other aspects of the relationship with the United States that are key? Well, I, the defence relationship is critical, as you say, and we have a, a plethora of agreements, it deals with intelligence, deals with some major joint facilities uh, that uh, are of enormous importance to the United States, it deals with uh, exercises, uh, acquisition of equipment, all sorts of things. That really in many ways is the heart of the practicalities of the American alliance. So you can't just put uh, defence aside in that regard, but there's an in interesting new dimension that uh, is uh, becoming uh, increasingly a dominant feature of the relationship, and that is investment. Uh, we now have a situation where there's over a trillion dollars worth of mutual investment, Australian in the United States, US in Australia. About 630 billion United States in Australia, 430 billion the other way. Uh, both sides rising rapidly. And we are the most important investment partner um, or the US is the most important investment partner for us. What would you say to Australians looking to visit the United States? Look, my advice to anyone, any Australian visiting anywhere is to go to smarttraveller.gov.au. That's, that's the DFAT website. Uh, register with it and take advantage of it. That's, that's the, the best way you can inform yourself and to safely travel when you, when you make your travel decision. So when you come here, and you'll get this advice on the Smart Traveller site, take out insurance, travel insurance and health related travel insurance. You, you've got to be smart about that. The other thing coming to the US is, particularly since 9-11, the US is pretty strict in the way in which uh, it enforces the rules associated with travel. You've got to make sure your documentation's right. You've got to make sure that you are coming for the purpose that you indicated originally. If you're coming for a visit, then you've got a visit waiver scheme for 90 days. But if you're coming to work, you actually need a proper uh, work visa to do that. And um, when you come here, obey the laws, have fun, but make sure that you have uh, the, the fullest possible information uh, to ensure that your trip is unadulteratedly joyous. How would you, just in, in closing, how would you encapsulate the relationship? Uh, this is, our, really is our closest relationship when all boils down to it. Uh, and it's a relationship driven partly by officialdom and defence connections and the like, but really it's more than that. It's not much of a challenge to understand the US. We're educated in that regard effectively from birth via Sesame Street and everything else. So we would be as understanding a country, a knowing a country, 
uh, of the United States as any other country on earth. And they've got a pretty fair idea about us. They're very aware of massive Australian cultural penetration of Hollywood there. There's a, you know, it's not any longer around here an assumption that Australia is about beaches and barbies. On a personal note, what's been your most memorable moment so far as Australia's ambassador? Well, I've had lots of memorable moments. Uh, perhaps the most memorable one is, uh, is falling down on black ice and snapping the patella tendon behind both knees, which meant that I went in to see the president to present my credentials in a wheelchair. But uh, that, that is memorable for bad reasons. For good reasons, there's, you know, these seeing through Congress, the Defence Trade uh, uh, Cooperation Treaty, that was, that was a memorable moment. Uh, but I think probably the most memorable moments uh, uh, are around American politics, going to the President's second inaugural. That was absolutely outstanding. Going to State of the Union speeches in Congress, going to the Democrat and Republican conventions for, for nominating their presidential candidates, and, and seeing the Australian Prime Minister stand up in the, uh, in the House of Representatives and deliver a speech to a joint sitting of the, of the Congress. They're all in their various ways, very, very special moments. Thank you for your time today, Ken. Good to be with you.